everyone. I'm Emily Longaretta. And I'm Michael Schneider. And welcome to Variety's Awards Circuit, where we're looking at some of the key television categories in this year's Primetime Emmy race. And this time out, we're looking at Outstanding Limited Series and Anthology category. And this is a ridiculous category. I feel like everyone decided they were a limited <laughs> series this year. Let's just put all of our best shows here. Completely. So it is competitive. Yes, it is so stacked. It's starting with, of course, Dahmer, Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. She gonna open your gift? Evan Peters, of course, has already won many awards for this. He won the Globe, of course, and it won the BAFTA for International Program, which is a very big success. And I think this is Ryan Murphy's really big hit for yeah. Netflix. Of course, a lot of the supporting cast people are talking about, especially Niecy Nash. Yeah. So I think that those two are probably going to get some love. And the show overall, as controversial, it's a very, very heavy topic, but people are watching it. It's one of those shoe wins, basically. Yeah. Definitely a front runner and also big enough that Monster has become a franchise now. Yes, so there'll be many more monsters to come. So Beef is a show that, again, it could be a comedy, it could be a drama. They finally decide to stick it in limited. It's yeah. like, <laughs> let's just split our difference and put it here. I've been hustling my whole life. And look where it's gotten me. A real fantastic revelation, both from Ali Wong and Stephen Yun, a show that kept you on your edge of your seat. I mean, this show made me nervous the entire time I was watching because I just didn't know when the other shoe was going to drop and who I was rooting for. At some point, I'm rooting for Ali Wong, but then at some point, I'm rooting for Stephen Yun. And at some point, I'm rooting for neither of them. And sometimes I'm just rooting for everyone else around. But then a lot of the other people in the show are terrible as well. And, you know, living in Los Angeles, we also have all been there. I'm two steps away from being the star of Beef myself many times. So this is really a <laughs> show that's relatable. It's fantastic cast. A lot of great stars who we haven't mm -hmm. seen do this kind of work before. For Stephen and Allie specifically, I feel like most people know Stephen from The Walking Dead universe. Mm -hmm. Most people know Allie as a comedian. It was so great to see them both take on this new role and crush it, both of them. Yeah. I mean, you were really 100% forgot about anything they'd done in the past, and you were so in it with them from start to finish. Yeah. Of course, the very intense story helped. <laughs> yeah, and the bad choices that they yeah, make throughout. So many bad decisions. So <laughs> Let's go back to some uh, mass murderers. We took a second away from it, but let's talk about Blackbird. Yes, Blackbird, of course, has been a big conversation already in the awards world. Why are you looking at me like that? Like you know me. Paul Walter Hauser won the Globe for supporting, and of course, Taryn Edgerton has been nominated for multiple different awards. The two of them are really, really something to watch on the screen, and it is a disturbing murder story, once again, based on a true story. Yeah. But that is what people like to watch. We've learned. Yes. <laughs> people true like crime some dark true crime. It's hot, and Paul Walter Hauser didn't expect him to get as many accolades as he has, but he is on a roll right now, yes, he and he is terrifying in this show. And I think for Taryn, the way that people are kind of looking at him as people were so used to seeing him in The Kingsman or seeing him as Alan John and Rocket Man that taking on such a different kind of role, physically transforming into this very, very beefy kind of man, he really, really created this whole character as Jimmy. So I think that that's something people are really attracted to. Okay, let's cleanse our palate now. Okay. Let's do I something that's a little... <laughs> A little lighter, even though it has to do with breakups and some drug use, and but you know. adultery <laughs> and all sorts of things. But nonetheless, Daisy Jones and the Six. Billy, you wrote a good song, not a great one. Did you guys want to record something or fight more? I'm fine either way. Start with the music. Just so, so excellent to the point where it topped every iTunes chart before the show yeah. even came out. Everyone it, was downloading the album. Riley Keough, who's the star, who says that she's never sung before, is fantastic as Daisy Jones. I yes. mean, these songs are all bops. Every single one. The fact that they all actually became a band. Yeah, I mean, while they were making this, it, of course, COVID hit. So they spent a year forming a band over Zoom yeah. and practicing nonstop. And it paid off because yeah. every single performance they do is so, so great. And then the acting on top of it. It yeah. was just really, really great. The entire supporting cast, the women especially, I would say Riley, of course, Camilla Marone and Suki Waterhouse also yeah. just so, so great. But I think overall they just did a fantastic job also of recreating what it was like to be making music in Los Angeles in the 70s mm -hmm. and, you know, the nod to Fleetwood Mac without yes. it actually being about Fleetwood Mac. That's an example of a great adaptation of a book exactly. where, you know, you had one idea when you read the book, but then when I actually saw it on screen, it's like it came to life. And that's hard when it's such a beloved story. I mean, Daisy Jones and the Six was a beloved book that people really, really couldn't get enough of. and 
Fleischman's. Let's talk about another book that was Let's talk adapted. about it. Fleischman is in trouble, FX show that really, really blew up on Hulu. I did not become a doctor to get rich, okay? I did it to live a meaningful life. Money doesn't buy you happiness. Oh, Toby, of course it does. What, are you crazy? Lizzie Kaplan, I would say, blew my mind, but Claire Danes, of course, mm -hmm. is supporting, also really, really crushed it. The story was intense. It made me a little anxious. Mm -hmm. I laughed. I cried. I think that it had the full spectrum of emotions, which is really what we always talk about, shows that make you feel. So I think that that's why this show is something that people are talking about. Yeah, and it was also, you know, the fact that Taffy Bordesser Ackner adapted her own book, and so I knew exactly who these characters were, mm -hmm. how she wanted to see it on the big screen, and I think that paid off with this series yeah, as well. 100%. I mean, some adaptations really do work. Sometimes they don't, and sometimes they're done twice in a year of a true story. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, love and death, still the Candy Montgomery story, played for a second time around. I'm not very attractive to you. Uh -huh. Would you be interested in having an affair? Solid, solid work by Elizabeth Olsen, yes. who really brings a smart eye to, to Candy. Mm -hmm. It's a show that starts out being one thing. It's kind of comedic, those yes. first couple episodes early on, where she's like, I think I want to have an affair. No big deal. And Jesse Plemons is there. <laughs> Jesse Plemons, by the way, fantastic in everything he does. So excellent. I mean, he's one of the kings of limited series, Truly, by the way. Yes, he 100%. just pops up, kills it, and then moves on to the next thing. <laughs> yeah. And again, I say kills it because what's a show without a murder? Exactly. And every show needs a murder. And this show's murder is very, very intense and very bloody. And Lily Rabe, of course, is it's not a spoiler alert because it's a true story it's, that happened years and years ago. Yeah. Of, you know, obviously plays Betty, the one who gets murdered, and it is graphic and kind of amazingly done visually. So I think that this is something people are talking about. Yeah. People love Elizabeth Olsen. I mean, yeah. she can't do any wrong in my mind, even though she's literally murdering someone people in this show. People love Elizabeth Olsen, they love murder. Perfect, perfect for this show. <laughs> and now let's give our picks for shows bubbling under that we would like voters to consider. I'm gonna throw to you to go first this time. Oh, really? I'm gonna, All right. I'm gonna mix it up. Well, you know, AI scares me because I think it's going to take over my job and Emily's job one day. But before AI does take over our jobs, we had a chance to really enjoy Mrs. Davis on Peacock. Is it okay if I proxy? Sorry, she'll speak to me through here, and then I'll just repeat whatever she says. Not she. It. It's a story that's not just about AI, it's about faith, it's about religion, technology, the intersection of the two, and it's bonkers. But I would expect nothing less from Damon Lindelof, who's one of the co-creators, executive producers of this show. Fantastic cast, of course, led by the amazing Betty Gilpin, who was wonderful in Glow, mm -hmm. and now is the star of this, and just killed it as Sister Simone. It's an absolute fun show to watch. Is it a comedy? Is it a drama? Well, it's a limited series. They'll just throw it in there, just yeah. like beef. We don't know, we're throwing it in here. Yeah. Okay, for me, I think I'm gonna go with a show that aired a bit ago, again, going back to some dark topics, A Friend of the Family. Good morning, Jan. It's gonna be a great day. Hey, who do you love the most? Brother B! Brother B! Brother B! I know that a lot of people kind of forgot about it. It's been a bit, but the performances that were done in it were really, really incredible. Jake Lacey in a role that no one has seen him in before. Of course, people knew him from The White Lotus season one and <laughs> didn't really play a likable person in that, but is really playing someone completely unlikable in this. And of course, it's based on a true story of a small girl who was abducted by the same person twice. It's absolutely devastating. McKenna Grace is really, really awesome as this young girl, and it's a really, really tough role, but she completely embodies this character in a devastating way. I was so, so moved by all the performances, but really her and Jake Lacey really stood out to me. And I just think people should consider that. Turn on Peacock and catch up. Did we just pick two Peacock shows? I, I promise they're not sponsoring I us. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but that is it for now. Join us again next time for another edition of Award Circuit. Thanks for watching.